Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. And if you're doing this right on the days, I pray that you stayed safe through the storm. Uh, continuing to pray for our uh, brothers and sisters, um, our friends, our family, whoever that may be over in Southwest Florida. Um, and there is going to be opportunity uh, for us to be able to step towards them. And uh, we'll unleash that to you as the time comes. Uh, but right now, what a powerful thing we can do in praying for them. Uh, One of the things that always leads towards prayer is being able to be built up in faith. And that is exactly what John 15 um, is all about. And so as we dive into John 15, it's a pretty popular section of scripture about talking about the vine and the branches and uh, Jesus being the true vine. But we always have to make that connection as well leading into this John chapter 15 that this is speaking towards a little uh, once again a prophecy fulfilled right away it starts with i am the true vine the true vine now in the old testament it was over and over and over again that israel was actually likened to a vine a vineyard um, the, the the choice vine god chose them to be his people yet they were running into being a wild vine rather than a consistent, growing, fruitful vine. We can see that in Jeremiah chapter 2. If you take a look at Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21, it it speaks towards the, the vine, the choice vine of God running wild, turning from him. But that's why John picks it up here and being able to speak, speak towards Israel, Jesus being Israel, experiencing everything Israel, had to experience, but doing it in a perfect way, doing it in a innocent way, doing it in a true way. So it says, I am the true vine. I am Israel, but I am the Israel that's actually, yes, chosen and sent by God to do his work, to do his will, and I will accomplish it rather than wild run wild from it. So that's where we dip into John chapter 15, a beautiful fulfillment of prophecy, but also great words to us in this way. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be given, so that it will be even more fruitful. I want you to know a little bit about, especially back in this culture at that time, that quite interesting. I love this association of being able to say, hey, every fruit that doesn't bear fruit uh, or every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he cuts off, right? Because he doesn't want to give that life source uh, to something that's not going to bear fruit. But the one that is bearing fruit, the one that is connected to the vine and is actually going to bear fruit as it's kind of speaking to that analogy once again, Believers being able to actually walk by the Spirit, bearing fruit for the kingdom. And so the one that does bear fruit, he prunes back. Discipline is good. Actually, suffering produces perseverance and perseverance hope. And so as he prunes that back, he's doing it because that that branch isn't fully ready and fully big enough to be able to bear the fruit of the kingdom, the great big fruit, fruit that will last. So this is what they would do back in that culture. I love this reality. Getting to that vine. As they would have that vine, the branches would come back, they would cut back those branches. On that first year, they would cut back that branch and be able to say that as it comes forward, it would bear fruit, but small fruit. But then they would cut it back again the second year. And then they would cut it back again the third year. And by that third year, that branch would be, yes, connected to the vine, but also pruned back so that it would be bigger and greater to be able to have weightier fruit. Now let's take this into scripture, being able to say, what is Jesus doing to his disciples? Pruning them back year one, year two, year three. Being able to teach them, be able to have them connected, uh, flowing into them the life source that they need to bear fruit, to bear much fruit, to bear the greatest fruit of the kingdom. It is going to be on them. The vine is not going to be with them very much longer, as we talked about in our last video. But he's actually the branch that's connected, that is ready, that is strong, that has the life source, that is going to bear fruit, big fruit, weighty fruit, for the kingdom of God is ready. 
So, with all of that in understanding, it says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. This is pretty understandable, <laughs> being able to say, if the, the branch is cut off, from the separated from the vine, it won't bear the fruit that the vine is going to produce. It doesn't have the life source. Jesus being the true vine, us being connected to Jesus, remain in him, and you will bear fruit. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Not he might, he will. The life source does bear fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You will not be about the kingdom. You will not be about the way of God. You will not be about the witness and the, the, the proclamation of Jesus because you're not connected to him. You're just going to be doing your own thing, and there isn't life in that. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Verse 6, If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is really speaking towards that faith that we have connected to Jesus. What are we going to be doing? We're going to be talking to the Father, which is prayer. When you remain in me, my words remain in you, ask, ask, pray, whatever you wish, and it will be given you when you're connected and doing the life of Christ. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands, and remain in his love. It's not an if-then, although it does say if, it's you are connected to the vine, you live the will and the, and the life of Christ, which is obedience and love. Love God, love one another. So it just is flowing from him. And that way, we get to see. We're going to show that we're his disciples. Verse 11, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. It just does the work. Go do this work. What, what for? Doesn't matter. Just do the work. That's what a servant does to his master. But a friend actually knows the business, knows the purpose. And this is what we know of the kingdom. Verse 15, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love one another. You didn't choose me. I chose you. How beautiful that is, is he's speaking that to his disciples, and they would say, oh, yeah, that was a little different. Disciples don't, uh, rabbis don't choose their disciples. Disciples choose their rabbi. And being able to see and kind of go to him and say, hey, could I be your disciple? But rather, Jesus flips that as the rabbi, as the teacher, and follow me. He goes and chooses his disciples to follow me because he knows the ones that are going to be connected to the vine, that are going to have that life source, and that are going to bear fruit fruit that will last. They all. He also knows that he's not going to be choosing these great, educated, and philosophical, and, and well-known men. No. He does the fisherman. He does the tax collector. Something, another flip, because it isn't about them. It's about them being connected to the vine, the life source, and that will bear fruit. That will produce prayer. That will produce disciples for life. So brothers and sisters in Christ, don't take that as a huge conviction. <laughs> but Jesus chose you. 
not because of what you bring to the table, but rather how Jesus views you and connects you to the vine, to the life source, to the truth, so that you can not just do whatever you want, but rather live the life of the fruitfulness of Christ. Apart from the vine, you can do nothing. Well, it makes sense. We need the life source. We need the teaching. We need Jesus to be able to produce the fruit that points people to the kingdom of God, which is Jesus. Have a blessed day being fruitful in all that you do. Have a blessed day seeing that that fruit produces in you a time of prayer. Pray for our state. Pray for this storm. But pray for the kingdom of God to be able to do what it needs to do this day in and through you. Have a blessed day.